Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is part two of a series of videos on the sovereign citizen Roger Hillegas. To recap, this is a uh, competency hearing for him uh, to determine whether or not he is indeed competent enough to stand trial for uh, allegedly kidnapping his uh, own mother from a nursing home because he had some sort of custody dispute and the fact that he's uh, not exactly uh, fully stable on the home front. Uh, was one reason for the uh, gusty dispute. In other words, he had no, really no home to go to, so he couldn't take her anywhere that was secure. Needless to say, he didn't have any authorization to do it, and he ended up getting arrested for it. So, uh, if you wish to see the first part, uh, I will have a link in the description, and I will have a link up in the top right corner for you to watch. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right back into the uh, Three Ring Circus that is this uh, hearing. And I stand on the Federalist Papers. And my standing is one of the people. And you have not responded to this jurisdictional challenge and I've, I've provided a document to um, Krishna Prasad and I asked him to file that. I asked him to mail it to my residence. He failed on both of those counts. And he told me today that he still has the documents that I asked him to file, challenging your jurisdiction. So I'm asking for a final fact and conclusion of law that you have jurisdiction over me. You're a corporation. You're a for-profit corporation with a Dun & Bradstreet number. Wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, you are so wrong here, dude. Uh, this is pretty much the judicial branch of the government doing its job to make sure that, well, civil and criminal matters are taken care of fairly and expediently. And it's most unfortunate that we have people like you, whether uh, intentionally or, uh, well, just through sheer ignorance, tend to gum up the works of these proceedings because of their uh, think the belief that they know how a system works when they have actually no experience in it. Therefore, they are not qualified to even run any part of the judicial system. I do not consent to this corporation, and I do not consent to this hearing. I'm being unlawfully detained and held. I have not committed a crime. There are no victims in this case. There are no injured parties. Well, now, the victim in this case is most likely your mother who is experiencing dementia and requires the constant care of the nursing home to make sure she remains functional. Which leaves me to question, where the hell were you going to take her to uh, ensure that she was going to get the proper medical attention that uh, was required in her case? And keep in mind that, uh, well, you allegedly walked in there and took her out of there without the authorization of the nursing home because of said uh, dispute of uh, custody. So another victim in this particular case would most likely be the nursing home, considering that you violated their security procedures, which can open up a whole can of worms when it comes to uh, liability issues within that uh, nursing home facility. I have not committed any crimes. I'm being held against my free will. I have not consented to the corporation of the Washington County Detention Facility or the Washington County Sheriff's Office. I do not consent to being taken against my rights in Missouri without a proper search warrant or a valid arrest warrant. Okay, let's go in and let the guy who's being arrested question the validity of the warrant based upon what now? Based in your own uh, fantasy land of what you think the law is? Uh, no, that's not how it works. The two, the two magistrates in Missouri dismissed this case for lack of jurisdiction. They understood that they lacked jurisdiction over me. 
there was no injured party, and I was still unlawfully detained. The Nevada legislature is looking into this case. The United States Senate is looking into this case. They're considering impeachment proceedings. Uh, everything that guy just says bullshit. Thank you. Uh, citations, please, on all of what you just said, because I can't seem to find anything about uh, the U.S. Senate getting involved in this case. In fact, I don't think the U.S. Senate would particularly care because they've got much bigger things to deal with. And you've been placed on notice that this is, I'm proceeding in the common law. And I believe you've been given two notices and um, you have not responded. So your silence equates to your stipulation that I am one of the people, I am proceeding under the common law, and that there is no injured party in this case. This case must be dismissed. I, I, I ask to be released immediately. I am being detained against my free will. I have not committed a crime. Mr. Stanton. State's position, please, on competency. Uh, I think it's helpful to return to the statutory uh, framework, which says the court shall receive the reports after, as the court has today, and, and allow the parties an opportunity to traverse uh, the findings. Um, Mr. Prasad uh, does not wish to do that. I do not wish to do that either. I mean, it, because my reasons are the reasons I've always stated, which is despite the uh, legal sounding godly goop, like sort of politically, you know, political views, this, you know, sort of shielded in uh, legal sounding language, the defendant is competent. So basically, as established in the previous video, uh, this idiot is competent enough to stand trial, despite, as you put it, the legal sounding gobbledygook that he tends to put out there. Which, is, you're right, it's a bunch of BS that's disguised as a uh, actual legal argument uh, when it's not anything but a load of BS. Uh, Mr. Prasad, uh, it's quite telling, states that he, nothing he has seen uh, in his, uh, the current limited representation uh, would contravene uh, what, the, what the findings ought to be. Right? He, he does not believe that the defendant is incompetent. The question of the, uh, the court said it called it a fairly significant fall. I think there's really, we don't have any evidence in the record for that, right? That self-reported that he fell. Um, e equally, uh, I would point to suspicious as the use of the wheelchair, right? Every time he's out of custody, every time he's driving, no wheelchair, and here we have sort of this uh, political and sort of uh, sympathy and gendering use of a... Well, the reason I brought it up today preliminarily were twofold. One, to let you know if the court does adjudicate Mr. Hillegas competent to proceed, then before he comes into trial with a wheelchair, there's going to be a hearing on medical necessity. For per the second reason is that, you know, if there were concerns about his physical well-being, um, and impact on cognitive abilities. If somebody's showing up in a wheelchair, that makes the court curious, what's going on with this person? But he hasn't been in a wheelchair the last few times. He seemed vigorous and strong, yes. articulate. And so the question is, is what he's doing, is it rational? Is it rational? Does he have rational understanding of what's happening here? Your okay. view is it does. Yes. Because let's all agree on something. If, if the two evaluators come back with the opinion, which they did, that he's competent to receive <coughs> adjudication, that is certainly, um, can be persuasive to the court. That can be um, extremely informative to the court. It's not binding on the court. It's not binding. There's no shall, nor should there be, because it takes out the judicial role to make a fair and partial determination. But, but you're saying both, they came in, they both said competent, and you should exercise your discretion, Judge, not to yourself traverse them based on what we have here, right? Yes, and, and because they rely on the type of evidence that we would expect them to rely on despite the you know, distasteful 
political views that the defendant is espousing, the deliberate, you know, trying to railroad and grandstand at every opportunity, they use both that and the routine collection of evidence by the jail to show that he is. Did you hear that? Routine collection of evidence. So basically what he's stating, that what the uh, prosecutor is stating there, is that uh, the jail is doing this by a routine and does it quite frequently because, well, it is part of the process. And now you have this uh, defendant trying to say that is a violation of his Fourth Amendment rights, as he did in the previous video, when uh, it's already been established that, well, uh, this is the kind of thing that happens when you're arrested, because it is part of the due process of law. You get searched and your property seized at uh, specific times when you are arrested, and he was arrested. So, Softard, uh, it's not looking so great for you right now. What you're complaining about is the standard thing that goes on within the justice system. St uh, gears working and gears turning, uh, d despite your lack of knowledge of how anything within the system works. Competent. I would ask the court to adopt, for example, all of the all both the civil cases, the GR and the PR uh, case numbers in which the defendant engaged in self-representation in a similar manner without any barriers to competence. Um, now, I, Dr. Warren is here today. I could, I offered to call her to um, sort of underscore or highlight some of the things um, in the evaluations and I would predict she would say nothing she has seen here t today or at the last hearing would uh, change her opinion. Well, I'd, li I'd like to hear from her okay. if, if he I could say exactly her. what you believe she would say. Let's yeah. call her at this time. Okay. Uh, Dr. Learning, if you could please come forward. You saw me swear or affirm the testimony about to give in this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So, have you got? Yes, I do. You may have a seat. And before you state your name, and first of all, make yourself comfortable. Please slide in and bring the mic, bring the microphone down pretty close. Uh, before she starts testifying, the question. Do I seal this portion of the hearing because she may go into Mr. Hilligus' medical, um, physical and mental health issues and uh, ask that the uh, recording cease at this point and the transcript be sealed because this is uh, going into areas that might be considered uh, otherwise private and not subject to public dissemination? Yes. What do you think, Mr. Prasad? Do you need a moment to discuss with Mr. Hilligus or? I think out of an abundance of caution, it should be sealed, I think. Um, it's likely she's going to go into some of those factors. Just to protect Mr. Hillegas and make sure that information that might be disclosed here doesn't get out into the to the public. Mr. Viz, you, you want to say something? I just want to place on the record that there is a, an investigation by the DOJ for HIPAA violations, so anything that is not used in the civilian states can be used against her. All right, thank you. The court orders that this portion of the hearing be sealed. The minutes shall not be filed other than under um, seal level of security uh, or further order of the court. The court asks those that are currently um, videoing this hearing, uh, please stop at this time and then we'll resume when this witness is done testifying. Mr. Stegey, anything else you'd like the court to hear? Um, your, your view, your approach, your suggestion for the court based on everything we now know? I'd ask you to find Competent. Thank you. Anything else from, from you, Mr. Prasad? I have nothing further to add. All right, thank you. Give me just a moment, please. <clears throat> the court finds that Mr. Hillegas does possess the ability to comprehend the nature of the criminal charges against him, that he understands the nature and purpose of the proceedings against him, and that he can aid and assist 
himself within a reasonable degree of rational understanding throughout the adjudication process. Furthermore, in the event uh, the court were to appoint counsel or Mr. Delegates change his mind and hire counsel, he could assist that person during this process. So Mr. Delegates, the court does find that you are competent to proceed to adjudication. So here's, now let's spend a couple minutes going through the what happens now. I gave a preview of what might happen, what issues might be in play, but now it gets more direct. The first thing is I ordered the West County Sheriff to please release your hand, your arm restraints so you can take notes a little bit easier. Deputy, unless there's a public health or safety reason you can think of. All right. Judge, I'm only going to release his right arm. Right Are you right-handed, sir? Yes. All right. For now, that'll be that'll work for today. Going forward, it may be both, particularly if you're sitting by yourself. Next, uh, the court relieves the Washoe County Public Defender's Office of the appointed counsel for purposes of the competency hearing because that hearing and that process has now ended with a decision by the court that Mr. Hilgis is competent to proceed. Well, now I bet this public defender is quite happy that he doesn't have to deal with this soft tart anymore. He'll probably go home and uh, pop open a bottle of champagne and celebrate tonight that he doesn't have to deal with this crap. With respect to standby counsel, If I relieve the Washoe County Public Defender of their um, role as standby counsel, there are a couple issues there. One is that if Mr. Hilligas later were to determine he could use their advice and assistance and be a resource to sit there and help answer questions, they won't be there. There'll be an empty chair there. Or if we go to trial, There'll be a co-defendant and co-defendant's counsel there. Uh, the other issue is, I really want to make sure Mr. Hilligas has easy access to file things and review things that are filed promptly. And it certainly would assist the court to have standby counsel there to fulfill that role. But I realize that's not generally what standby counsel is used for. Not a sort of a glorified a file clerk, you need to have another approach. And with that, I will end it here on part two. But don't worry, uh, there will be more to come in part three when we see a lot more of this soft tart stupidity that he uh, possesses. I mean, there's only just so much stupidity the brain can handle anyway. And, uh, well, uh, you got to let your brain cool down after something like that. And, uh, well, it's going to get even worse in part three and maybe part four. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.